before the mind can settle down, you have to do a little house cleaning. Clean up the mind, clean up the body. Cleaning up the mind is putting it in the right mood, with the right attitude, so that it's ready to settle down and not pick up a lot of other issues. After all, you've got a whole hour here free to think about anything you want. And there will be a part of the mind, or many parts of the mind, that have other agendas. So do the chanting to remind you that those agendas are not of any interest right now, not of any worth. If you think about things of the past, they're gone. Things in the future, you don't really know what's going to happen, but you do know that the mind has to be well trained. And a lot of our thinking boils down to thinking about sights, sounds, smells, tastes, tactile sensations, ideas. And it's in that discourse we chanted just now to remind us that these things burn away at the mind as long as there's greed, aversion, and delusion. And so until you take care of the greed, aversion, and delusion, it's just like adding more fuel to the fire. And you remind yourself, with a chance on the Brahma Viharas, that you do really, really want true happiness, and you want a happiness that's good for everybody. So the chance are there to clean out a lot of unskillful attitudes in the mind, and to get you ready to settle down. As you bring attention into the body. This is where you have to clean things out in the body a bit, because there is a tendency when you start focusing in on the body that the power of your focus pushes the blood around, interrupts the flow of energy, and gets very restrictive. It can be very uncomfortable. So the natural reaction is to get away, leave the focus. You find yourself bouncing around the body quite a lot, in and out. So once you've got the right attitude that this is important, then the next thing you've got to do is to clean things out a little bit in the body. Make sure that the energy is flowing well in the different parts of the body. You can make your survey start down at the navel, move up the front of the body, over the top of the head, down the back, down the shoulders and the arms down through the legs, out to the tips of the toes. Try to loosen up all the areas of tightness so that we can begin to realize that okay, your awareness getting centered is one thing and the flow of energy in the body is something else. They may occupy the same space, but they don't have to affect each other. And in particular, the movement of the mind into your center shouldn't squeeze things out. It's like your awareness and the body are on different wavelengths, and they don't have to interfere with each other. But first, make sure you're clearly aware of the movement of the energy in the body, that it's moving well. And then as your awareness begins to settle down in whatever spot you've chosen, it doesn't offer any resistance to allowing that energy to move. When you can make this distinction, then it's a lot easier to settle down and just be here really solidly. And then what do you do when you're here? You just remind yourself, this is a place you want to stay, and you want to develop a skill, the skill of staying very, very still. And so even though it may not seem like anything is happening, there are things happening. There are little stirrings here and stirrings there that if you paid attention to them would pull you away. And you're developing the skill of not getting pulled away. There's a passage in the Vinaya where Moggallana's 
talking to some monks and saying that when he was in what they call the imperturbable concentration, sitting by the side of a bank of a river, <clears throat> he heard the elephants in the river playing and trumpeting and splashing around and crossing over the river. The monks got upset. They didn't think if he was in that concentration he'd be able to recognize those things. So they went to complain to the Buddha. And the Buddha said, actually, there is that concentration. It wasn't quite pure, but that does count as concentration. It counts as the imperturbable. There's a controversy around this, whether the monks were upset whether about Moggallana saying that he could hear the elephants or whether it was an issue of the fact that he could recognize what the sounds were. And the commentaries write about this, and they say well, it's basically they were upset because he could recognize what this was. If you're in that concentration, they don't say that you couldn't hear things, it's just that you don't move your mind out. Even large noises don't shake you. So we're not trying to block out our ears here. It's simply a matter of not getting pulled away by any other disturbances that kind of come up, whether they're outside or inside, physical or metal. Just think of them exploding into nothingness, whereas your mind is solidly right here. That's the quality you want. This quality of solidity. Now we're trying to make the mind solid, not necessarily the body solid. I mean, some people will find that as the mind settles down, it does actually stiffen up the body, which is one of the reasons why we go through the body first and straighten out the breath energy so it doesn't get unbalanced that way. It's possible when the mind settles in that you find that you can't breathe. And that's because you're using your awareness to squeeze the body. You don't want that. You want the awareness to settle in in the same place as the body, but not to squeeze anything in the body. Learn how to make that distinction. That's an important one. You want the body to be light. Open. But you want your mind to be solidly centered right here, like everything is focusing in here. The more you can maintain this focus and keep it solid, the more strength that your concentration gets. And this comes from being able to clean things out as you start. To remind yourself there's nothing out there you need to get interested in right now. You don't have any responsibilities to know anything about the world right now. You want to develop this skill of getting the mind really centered, gathering in, gathering in right here, in a way that allows the body to feel at its ease, and the mind to get unperturbed. If you're allowed to get perturbed by things coming in through the senses, as the Buddha said, it's like a cow with flailed, flayed skin being attacked by flies. It's constantly this little bite here, that little bite there, all the time, coming in from all directions. Sight, sound, smells, taste, tactile sensations, they're all coming in all the time, all the time. And if you let them disturb you, it's like those caribou you see up in Alaska when the mosquitoes are getting to them. They buck and they run and get contorted all over the place. That's the mind that leaves it open, leaves itself open to outside stimuli. They were not trying to block them out in the sense of not being able to hear them or sense their presence or even know. But we are blocking them out in the sense that you just don't want to pay them any attention. So keep reminding yourself, if you find that you are going out, that there's nothing out there to really nourish you. The nourishment lies in here. 
the problem actually lies in here. The voice that wants to go out. That impulse to go out. But if you don't look very carefully and steadily right here, you never see where the impulse comes from. You just see it move and you go along with it. But here we're trying to be imperturbable. Don't let yourself get phased by anything. It's in that way that the mind develops strength. <laughs>